everyone, this is Teresa Jackson here to give you an introductory tour of Adobe's brand new mobile drawing app, Fresco. In its first release, Fresco only runs on iOS, so you'll need an iPad to try it out. You can download it free from the App Store, but you can see here at the sign-on screen that you'll need an account to use it. For access to all the features, including automatic saves to Cloud Docs and access to your custom created brushes, you should use an Adobe ID that is part of a paid Creative Cloud subscription. I'll launch the app by signing in with my Adobe ID. We can create a new document here with these templates where it says start a new document or we can tap on the create new. But let's take a look around the screen before we actually do that. If you go down to the Learn tab, you'll find a bunch of tutorials here, and I'm pretty sure that Adobe will be adding more of these over time. If you go to the Gallery tab, there's actually more tutorials, because what we see here are recordings of live stream shows. And if you scroll down, you can find some great projects for inspiration. Then if you come down here to your work, Cloud Documents, this is where all of your creations will be saved automatically. I've been using Fresco in the pre-release version, so I have a few things in my cloud documents already. All right, let's create a new document. I'll tap on the Create New, and I'll just go ahead and create one at the current screen size. Now we're ready to create something in Fresco. What makes Fresco really awesome are the different kinds of brushes. So let's start by taking a look at that. Right now we have the first brush in the toolbar on the left selected. These are the pixel brushes. If you tap on that, you can see that it says pixel brushes. I'll back out of the basic and you'll see that they're organized by different types. The basic brushes are the same basic brushes that you would find inside of Photoshop. If we come down here to FX, you'll find all kinds of really cool brushes. Like let's take this foliage two and then I'll just make a stroke on my canvas and you can see how that works. And the undo button's up here, so we'll undo that. Underneath the pixel brushes, you have what are called live brushes. I'll tap on that again to open up the live brushes. And there's both watercolor brushes and oil brushes. And notice down here in the left corner, these are your settings for your brush. So if we pick a watercolor brush, let's pick a different color too. This is the color chip here. Let's pick a blue color and put some water on the canvas. So we're seeing that this is spreading out because it's live. This is the size. If I tap and hold on this, I can make it even larger and then go across this again. That's so cool how that bleeds out. You can control that with this setting that has the water drops. So that's the water flow. If we take the water flow down, it's not going to bleed out as fast as it did with the water flow high. And then if we come back here and we change this to oil paint brushes, we'll take, take this first one here. Notice that the icon at the bottom changes because the live action that you get for a watercolor brush or for an oil brush is different than a watercolor. Let's pick a different color here and then take a look at this setting. This is your mixer setting. It's a lot like Photoshop mixer brushes, if you're familiar with that. So I'll go ahead and paint some of this on. Notice that it's blending in with the blue as I scribble across this. And if we pick a different color, let's pick a gold color here, we'll see that it's a lighter color. So it bleeds into those other colors pretty quickly. But if I start the stroke on the white area and then come into it, We'll see that it pulls all of those across. So you have so much creative control here with these mixer brushes. They're my favorite brushes. Finally, we have vector brushes. This is the third one down is the vector brushes. And these draw vector shapes. So just like in Illustrator, these are infinitely scalable. Or if you were a fan of the mobile app Adobe Draw, then these would be very familiar to you because these are the same type of brushes that you would find in Adobe Draw. As I uh, stroke this out, my pen, I'm using an, an Apple Pencil to do this, so with more pressure I get a thicker line. Notice too in our Layers panel on the right hand side, it created a new layer because the vector content is going to be on one layer and we can see by the icon here this is vector content and the 
pixel brushes or the pixel content is going to be on a different layer. You can add additional layers at any time. Tap on this plus, it'll add another layer. It doesn't know what the content of that layer is until I paint on it. So let's go back up to a mixer brush and pick a different color and put some oil paint strokes down here. And so now that icon shows us that that's a pixel content layer. All right, just a couple more quick tips uh, regarding brushes here. First, if you want to edit the settings of the brushes that are in Fresco, you tap on the settings icon. There's lots and lots of options here, and they're going to change depending on what your active brush is. Next, if you want to find more brushes or maybe custom brushes that you've already created, you need to go to the pixel brushes. I'll tap on that to open it up and then scroll all the way to the bottom. Under there, you'll find your Creative Cloud libraries with brushes that you might have saved to the Creative Cloud libraries. Or you can tap the plus icon to import brushes or get more brushes from the Adobe's website. Running down the tools on the left, the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory. You have the eraser tool to erase, a move or transform tool. As soon as you tap on that, it selects the contents of the active layer and then grabbing one of the corners or and dragging it out or moving from the center of it, you can position it or tapping on this handle here will allow you to rotate the contents and then tap the done to get back out of that. Then we have uh, selection tools. If you tap and hold, you can see there are multiple selection tools and then a paint bucket and then an eyedropper. You don't really need the eyedropper though. I'm going to go back to the pixel brushes and then show you if you tap hold do a long press it pulls up the eyedropper and then you can just move this around your art to select colors from what you might have already painted so it's a very quick easy way to pick up colors and then finally we have the picture or place an image icon this is my favorite way to start a drawing is just to start from a photograph so let's undo or let's delete the scribbles that I have here. To delete a layer, you tap on the more options icon and then we have delete layer. So we'll do that for each of these. Get rid of all the scribbles. And then I'll tap on the picture icon, which gives me several options for finding a photo. I like to go to the Creative Cloud to find my photos. And I'm a photographer, I keep my photos in Lightroom. So that's what we're looking at here. Yours might pull up automatically to files, which would be your Creative Cloud files. If you want to get into library, you look for photos. And then if you don't see your collections, you can get that in the um, more options in the upper right. So if you're showing all photos, you can click on that more options to view collections instead of all photos. And then we can just choose any collection. Pull up these flowers here and say open and that'll place that as an image onto my canvas. We'll tap done to commit that and then I'll just create a new layer right on top of that that I could trace those flowers out. It might be a little easier to see what I'm tracing though if I select the picture layer, go to the options, actually not the more options but the settings up here and take that opacity down a little bit and then I'll select the new layer that I created choose the black color, come to my pixel brushes, and choose the pencil. That's under the sketching. It's where you find the pencil. And then using my Apple Pencil, I'll zoom in using the two finger gesture. I can just come around and quickly trace out my flowers. I start a lot of drawings this way. It's an easy way to get started. After it's all penciled in, then I can come in with all the fun brushes and paint it in in different colors. So I'm doing that pretty quick, but we can see if I choose the picture and then hide it, actually tap on the eyeball, we'll hide that. We can see how I created this pencil sketch to get started. While you're drawing with a pencil, you can temporarily switch it to the eraser with this circle here in the lower left. If you tap and hold on to that, it's like a shortcut. As soon as I put my pencil down on the iPad, you'll see that it says erase with brush. So while my left hand or my left thumb is on that circle, 
I can draw with my right hand and turn my pencil into an eraser. And that shortcut changes depending on what you're on. So if we switch to the lie brushes and come out of here and go into watercolor and pick a watercolor brush, let's pick something that's a prettier color here, and then put some watercolor wash down of the pink. I'll scroll in on this. We'll see that it's bleeding my pencil lines too because I painted it on the same layer. If I hold the shortcut down and start to paint, now I get just pure water. So I can bleed this out even more. I could bleed my pencil lines without any color at all. So this shortcut is really handy, but it changes depending on what tool you're using. When you're finished with your drawing or just ready to take a break, tap on the home icon that will force the document to save and it gets saved to your cloud documents. We can see the blue icon there temporarily while it was syncing with the cloud. And then if you want to open a different document to work on, I have one here that's finished. I'll tap on that to open it. It's opening that from the cloud. And this is a great feature because it doesn't fill up your device with your paintings. They get stored in the cloud where they're safe. And then when you're ready to access them, it pulls it back down out of the cloud. So we can see this finished painting here. If I tap in the upper right hand corner, it'll collapse most of the UI so that we have a cleaner space to work with. You might like to draw that way. So that's it for the introductory tour of Adobe Fresco. I hope you have as much fun exploring and playing and creating with it as I've had.